Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And I wanted to show you today a cool little gadget that I picked up uh, on, I think it was OfferUp maybe? Anyways, um, it's a um, it is a real rack and this is uh, what you would use if you were doing um, a sectional warping a lot of times, but I am using it as a just a real rack to um, hold all the cones while I am warping. And this particular warp that I am doing has four colors and I am doing four sets. So I have an order for um, four sets of towels in four different colorways and uh, it's going to be an interesting warp because I'm going to try tying on each successive colorway before I do any weaving. So as I'm beaming it, I'm going to uh, beam on one colorway and since it's all going to be the same um, threading, uh, I can then tie the second, third, and fourth colorways onto each successive um, set of warp colors and then beam those on. And hopefully when I weave them off, there'll be a lot less um, waste and uh, a lot less time in threading heddles. So, um, Anyways, I thought that I would uh, show you my new toy and um, also show you a little bit of the warping process. So uh, it's four colors, so I'm going to be doing this set next. And this is nice because um, I'm able to set up all the colors uh, that I need for the projects and um, in the order that I need to warp them. That way I don't get confused. Uh, they roll really nicely off of the, the rods, and um, it's nice and handy. Uh, this little rack has a, a little kick out here that uh, folds in for storage, so um, I can just shove it behind a bookcase or a shelving unit or whatever it is uh, when I'm not using it. So, um, yeah. There we go. So I'll go back to winding this warp. Um, we're going to do 36 threads of each color uh, three times. So here we go. Okay, so you can see the uh, warping reel over here. And then I'm just going to um, wind this along my path. Hopefully you can see. Okay, get the right path. Get my cross. There we go. And I do um, a cross at the top and the bottom. Um, the bottom cross is my main cross, the top cross is my safety cross. In case I lose my cross at the bottom, I can always um, find my cross at the top for the threading. So if you're unfamiliar with warping on a warping board, I measure out a path string that is the length of the warp. And then I put that on the warping board between the pegs and I find a route that is will allow me to uh, 
wind that length and depending on how long the warp is sometimes that's easier than other times um, but as you can see uh, in this case I'm actually turning down here kind of in the middle um, because that made it um, a little bit easier to come up exactly the right length. Now, I think that this is four and three quarter yards long. So then when you're winding it, um, you start up here, or I start up here at this peg, and I follow the string um, that I set and I figure out where my crosses are and I always go the same path. Well, in theory, sometimes I don't. Uh, but um, you can usually uh, make corrections. Um, if, if you skip a thread in your cross or something, you get two threads that go the same way in the cross once in a while. Um, and those problems are always uh, solvable. If you just kind of keep track of it and make sure that when you're threading that you take that into consideration because really the cross is there to help you with your threading. But then when you're laying down your thread here, you don't want to wrap your, your thread over the thread that you have on there. You want it to butt up against it and stack. And you don't want to have the thread um, like this one here, you don't really want that uh, space to be there um, because it's going to create a little bit of, of difference in the uh, length of that particular thread. So you want to push it back against its neighbor. And I found that having a couple uh, repeats, like this one is, is sticking out, um, but I'll push it back. So, plus if you didn't push them all up against each other, you wouldn't have enough room for your warp on the pegs. So I can get one set um, on a peg on the pegs. So since there are three sets of the colors, uh, I will end up winding three bouts of each set of colors. Some people do counting crosses. Um, I don't. I find them annoying. So I just, I end up stopping and counting. If I'm talking, then I can't keep track of my counts. Uh, but normally, the, since it's 36 uh, repeats or 36 uh, threads, I can, I can count that high um, if I'm not talking to the camera. Okay, so I need one more. And because this is an end, um, this is the first uh, set in the three. This has an extra six threads on the end. So we'll do, so that was 36 and now I'll do the six. So there is the last one of this color. So now, oh, 
Okay, so now I'm going to uh, grab my green thread here. And I'm just going to um, cut the blue thread because I'm done with it. And I will just tie these two together. And then I'm going to roll the blue thread up so it doesn't get um, tangled up. And then we can just continue on the green thread and do 36 of this one. and start thinking about stuff and then I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so now we're going to take the lime Just using an overhand knot. Um, these will end up being cut anyways. So I'm gonna roll my green up so it doesn't get tangled up. So ergonomically speaking, um, this is a good height for a whopping board. Um, it's a little bit high probably, but, and then when you're warping, it's best if you don't cross your arms over the center of your body like this, um, but I tend to anyways. Uh, what I really should do it to be ergonomically correct is the right hand stays to the right of center, the left hand stays to the left of center, and they meet in the middle like this. I am not always that ergonomically correct. I find I can work faster, if not longer. Uh, if I am doing it the other way. So you can see if I keep my hands kind of in the middle, it is easier on your shoulders.
so here I have a knot that came right in the middle. So I'm going to back up to uh, my beginning peg. I'm going to cut this here and then I will come down and find that knot. And I will cut it out. And you can use this for something else. I'll go in my thrums pile. And then I will, I'm basically moving the knot up to my turning peg up here because I don't want it in the middle of my project. And that is the last repeat of this set of colors. So we will pull this out a little bit, get this out, and what I do is my backup cross up here, I will put a string loop through. And I just put a string through the cross and then um, tie it uh, very loosely. And then I will be able to, um, if I need to recover my cross, uh, that is going to be right there. Um, now I have these clips that I use. So they're supposed to be chip clips. Um, I'm not sure they would work very well for my bags of chips, but I use these. So I use one on each leg of my main cross down here. These are a little challenging to get in here. There. And now I'm going to, I've got a little bit longer one, and this I will put at this end. Um, and I kind of moved this last thread over into the middle um, so that the clip will secure it nice and tight. That way it won't um, pull back when I cut that. So I'm just going to come here. And now I will take it off and chain it. So I keep it under tension. And I just loosely chain it. Some people chain a lot nicer than I do, <laughs> but mine work. And I don't put any choke ties or anything in here. The chain does all that for me. Some people put choke ties like every yard. Um, I don't know if I'm just lazy or <laughs> this works for me. If you want to use choke ties, you can. The weaving police will not come to your house. All right. So. So there's the first one. 
and I've just got two more to do. Here are all the bouts wound and ready to put on the loom. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to see future videos of me winding and weaving these towels. Thanks for watching and happy weaving!